what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we got a good one man by super kick studios how the rock became wrestling's biggest crossover star man this should be a good one someone sent this to me on twitter so i definitely had to check it out man um but before we get into this video i want to make this very apparent if you haven't subscribed to super kick studios Go ahead and right now. I'm already subscribed to his channel. I've been subscribed to his channel for quite some time. Go subscribe to his channel right now. Before you like this video, before you do anything else, subscribe to his channel. I'm gonna link down the original video, the video I'm reacting to. I'm gonna link it down in the description at the top of the description as I always do. Go subscribe and when you have subscribed to his channel, Put down in the comment section down below, I've subscribed to Superkick Studios. Or if you have already been a subscriber, put down, I have been a subscriber already. The only reason why I want to say, I'm saying this and I'm, I'm really kind of harping on this because I want to be able to show love to the content creators that check out these dope videos that I react to. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, sometimes I don't even react to his videos on camera. Sometimes I just check it out off camera because I like his content, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what I'll do. Sometimes I'll just watch his videos and other wrestling content creators. I may not even record it. Some of you guys have sent videos I've already seen. I just watched it in my spare time because I don't want to just post everything that, you know, from a, uh, one of my favorite wrestling uh, content creators, like, post, you know, react to everything. Some things I just want to watch, you know, on my downtime. And I think some of you guys should be able to watch it as well, you know. And then when we come together and watch it together as a reaction, then that's also cool. So I just always want to show love to the content creators. So please show them some love. Subscribe to Super uh, Super Kick Studios. His wrestling videos are top notch. Looking forward to this. I know it's a long intro. Just got to show love out there. We got to stay together in the wrestling community. And, you know, I, I like for us to all come together as one, as much as we possibly can. But this should be a good one. Appreciate all the love and support. Let's get into this video. I'm excited about this one. Very excited about this one. The Rock is one of pop culture's most recognizable and world-renowned figures. Big the same facts. conversation as guys like Drake and LeBron James. One of very few names that are so big that he can generate big-time box office numbers based on the name alone. Mm -hmm. As it links back to wrestling, he's one of the all-time greats. Goldie. See, The Rock became a megastar at a time where wrestling was seen in the same cultural sense as pro sports, music, and daily entertainment known as the attitude era yep. one of wrestling's biggest boom periods where wrestling was everywhere you looked and the funny part is when the foundations of that era were being laid he was just a nervous kid with expectations of a former generation on his shoulders his dad rocky johnson had wrestled before him and before him came high chief peter maivia who was mm -hmm. the rock's grandfather so you had this squeaky clean kid trying to play good guy and fans rejected it this was when the move was being made from more cartoony characters like Joint the Clown to more yeah. relatable and badass characters like Stone Cold Steve Austin. So after Rock tore... Him turning heel was one of the best things they did. Him being a heel worked out perfectly. Because once he became a heel, that's when we got the Rock persona. And from there, it was... There, he was he was over. There was nothing you can do. It was It was great. It was beautiful to see... Just that character change and how he became a megastar because of it. He tore up his knee, he returned from that injury, he ditched the cheesy third generation gimmick, and he started calling himself The Rock. He was disrespectful towards those same fans that booed him, and now he was... Kind of like what Roman's doing. I like it. Authentically himself. I mean, it, 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 it... Family line, it's the same thing. People didn't care for Roman as a babyface. Once he became a heel... He started to get more praise, more love, because that's what we that that's the real version of Roman right there. That's that's his character that he always should have been. Same thing with The Rock. And through it, he unintentionally won over fans of the WWF. See? What won them over was the natural charisma. His play on words, calling people jabronis, and the catchphrases upon catchphrases. Yes. It doesn't matter what you think. Know your role, shut your mouth. Finally, The Rock has come back. Candy ass, the millions. And the millions. Smackdown, the phrases go on and on. Consistently referring to himself in the third person. He had the flat top hairstyle, the $500 Versace shirts, the yep. sunglasses, his natural swagger and connection he, to the... The Rock had the drip. 
this this is drip just dripped out oh y'all be saying i have the drip on instagram he's my inspiration he's the ultimate drip god oh the man was unmatched he was simply able to hold the audience in the and the brow with his <laughs> mic work. he would have his one-liners that would leave fans in tears laughing his mannerisms and facial expressions added a ton to the product he simply grabbed the audience's attention and he never let go of it always seeing how he can get better how he can keep things fresh be it finding a new catchphrase be it drawing the highest rated segment in raw history with mankind or flat out just roasting the shit out of anyone in sight. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to the tail end of the 1990s and early 2000s, he had made himself into one of the world's biggest names. As the WWF was able to get more media coverage and crossover into the mainstream, Rock became a very coveted asset. He was on the merch, he was on the posters, dominating home video, and he was the guy who the kids were emulating with the eyebrow and how he yeah. was. <laughs> SmackDown birthed WWE's second weekly show in one of the most successful video game series ever. Mm -hmm. Shine us up real nice, Jabroni. And I know just where to stick it, Rod. What's your name? It doesn't matter what my name is. <laughs> Rock smells what you're cooking. Oh, man. Oh man, this is bringing Games bringing back so many Smackdown. memories. Know your role. Just bring it and shut your mouth. Four out of the five releases in that series were named after The Rock's catchphrases. The series was beyond successful, selling 37 million copies worldwide. We saw Rock appear in Star Trek, Chef Boyardee commercials. His first acting gig was actually him playing his dad on that 70s show. He also appeared in music videos that played off his catchphrases like It Doesn't Matter by Wyclef John and Know Your Role by Method Man. He did all of this in an authentic way. The dude was just a natural born entertainer and mm -hmm. was being showcased everywhere. Rock was taking the world by storm and expanding his reach beyond wrestling and that reach was about to get even bigger. We would see him host Saturday Night Live. In 2001, he introduced the original Xbox with Bill Gates. Not mm, because yep. Rock was a big fan of gaming, but the name would help Microsoft get a bigger buzz around yeah. the console's release. So, as you can see, he was everywhere from TV shows to commercials, launch events, video games, music, even had a New York Times best selling book. The Rock it was says. His charisma and on screen presence that gave Rock the opportunity to move into movies, with his first big role being in The Mummy Returns as the Scorpion King. Yep. Wrestlers in movies, not anything new. You had Andre the Giant and Princess Bride, Piper in They Live, and uh, Hulk Hogan yeah. and Mr. Nanny. The less said about that, the better. Yeah. Hulk Hogan was the guy who globalized the WWF in the 80s. Hulkamania took audiences by storm, and Vince McMahon launched WrestleMania around him. But Hulk was a guy who was also in the mainstream eye. He too mm -hmm. hosted SNL and was a larger-than-life figure. But when it came to acting, it was always Hulk Hogan doing his little line for the most part and playing himself. He couldn't take that next step and make a full crossover into the entertainment business because he just wasn't that good. Hulk Hogan had a hard time not playing Hulk Hogan and it didn't work. He just couldn't find an audience. Roddy Piper was another guy who was a good actor, but his time in the entertainment business wasn't that sustained. Even though he's one of wrestling's most well-known characters, his reach just didn't go as far as The Rock's did. But for Rock, things came naturally because a lot of wrestling parallels acting. In I was having this conversation with Dub maybe earlier today. We was talking about how The Rock really took the tools that he used to entertain people in wrestling and all around the world. He took that and brought that charisma that 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 flair into the acting world because when you see the rock on screen he doesn't seem like on a movie screen he doesn't seem like like out of place it it's it makes sense for him to be in a movie like you could see it didn't look weird if that makes any sense you can tell like with the Hulk Hogan you just saw Hulk Hogan just in a movie but with the rock Granted, you still kind of see just the rock in the movie, but his charisma carries it. Like, he gets into the role, and a lot of the roles and characters that he picks kind of fits, you know, it fits his style. You know, it fits who we've seen on a weekly television so, for so many years entertaining us. So, his crossover, it made sense, and it, it worked. It seemed kind of flawlessly, to be honest. 
in the sense that rock was in front of a live audience every week that required improv it required quick thinking and of mm -hmm. course the ability to adapt on the fly rock's appearance in the mummy returns caught the eye of directors as the movie brought in 435 million dollars at the box office so a spin-off was created called the scorpion king and who was gonna play the scorpion king None other than the jabroni beating, pie, pie eating, trail blazing, eyeball raising. From Canada to your mom, the guy who looks like a big thumb. A Scorpion King what? was a coming out party and really proved that he could hang in Hollywood. The role did a perfect job of displaying how The Rock could put on a good acting performance and also reference his WWE character. Rock made $5.5 million from The Scorpion King, a Ooh. record for an actor in his first leading role. Out of it, a video game was created, The Scorpion King Rise of the Damn. Alien, another one which would later... 5.5 million is a lot back in that time period, <laughs> even though it's weird to say it like that, but th that's a lot of money back then for your first acting role that whoo that's not bad that's not bad the release would be spy hunter and nowhere to run both in which rock was the main character but he returned to the wwe where audiences were feeling like the rock turned their back on them in a sense they mm -hmm. felt like yo we made this guy and now he's leaving us for the movies hollywood During rock, 2002, rock <laughs> took away months from the wwe to film movies but came back, won the WWE title, only to lose it to Brock Lesnar at the upcoming SummerSlam. Yep. Fans had gotten word that Rock was going to be leaving again, so they booed one of their favorites because he was leaving them high and dry. He returned the following year under a new persona known as Hollywood Rock, yep. a run where he was a bad guy, mocking those same people who were booing him for wanting success outside of the WWE. But again, in the process of doing so... He was he so was entertaining. Oh, my God. Hollywood Rock is was so fun, bro. He was a heel, but he was so funny. Like, you just loved, you loved every second of it. Like, he's the one guy, heel or face, it didn't matter. You were going to laugh your ass off. You were going to boo him at one point. You were going to cheer him up at one point. But you were going to be entertained, and that's really what's all that matters. Including myself, believed this was his best run. Yeah. He came back, had a match with Hulk Hogan at No Way Out 03, a WrestleMania match with Stone Cold, where in the third go around, Rock finally beat yep. Stone Cold at Mania. The Rock and Hurricane were hilarious together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he lost to Goldberg at Backlash 03, and he was basically as good as retired. Made some appearances here and there, including a Rock and Soccer reunion at WrestleMania 20. And from 2004 onwards, The Rock was basically retired from yep. the ring. He was going to focus on acting, and uh, things didn't go well at first. In his second leading role, The Rock got paid $12 million for the movie The Rundown. The Rock was that coveted that people were ready to shell out that type of money for him. Mm -hmm. The Rundown had good reviews. Also, in comparison to what I was talking about earlier, like his transition seemed seamless. He still had to work at it. It wasn't just like, oh, I'm The Rock. I'm, this movie's going to be great because I'm the rock and I'm in it or whatnot. He had to really hone in his craft and really find the scripts and roles that fit him, but also worked. So it's one of those scenes where he didn't always have hits in the box office. Yeah, there was there was a couple misses or whatnot. Uh, but at the same time, it's one of those scenes where you just got to work at it. And now he's easily one of the highest paid actors in hollywood right now it just in film in general he gets the big bucks because it's dwayne rock johnson <laughs> but in the box office the rock it johnson. can be defined as a flop meaning that the movie made back less than its budget mm -hmm. rundowns was 85 and it only made 80 million back but his performance in this movie was good and nowadays this movie doesn't get its due if you have time on your hands you should definitely watch it god and damn movie, walking tall which was a remake of the 1973 original and the movie is actually pretty entertaining but one of its biggest flaws is the constant jumps back and forth in time. And again, not the best of reviews here. But then things only got worse. Rock <laughs> appeared in the movie Doom and this shit was ass, man. The premise of this movie was basically we're just going to crouch around and walk while holding guns. Most of the movie is just a sneaking sequence and then near the end of it, Rock goes apeshit. It's Doom should have been so much better. The only part I like about that movie is the first person shooter part. Right before the movie ends. That's the best part of the movie. That that shit was cool. That first person sequence, if you know what I'm talking about, if you've seen Doom, right at the end, they do the first person sequence like the video game. That was the best part of the movie. Everything else, I was like, what the hell is this? What in the hell? 
it's like they put the rock in the movie just for the sake of putting the rock in the movie yeah doom had some downright horrid reviews and this was followed up by southland tales which again didn't do rock any favors his mid-2000s movies were mostly seen as failures by critics but it wasn't because of a lack of acting if anything he made movies which should have been way worse mm -hmm. better with his on-screen presence with more fails than successes it looked like rock was probably gonna have to go back to the wwe in terms of box office numbers he wasn't really the draw that maybe he and some others anticipated but then around late 06 things changed he went back to his roots not wwe but football Rock had aspirations of making it in pro football, and when that didn't work out, he came to the WWE. Well, now he was back on the gridiron, this time as an actor. He was in football movies like Gridiron Gang and Game Plan, mm -hmm. which were for sure cliche sports movies, but they both did great in terms of box office numbers, especially Game Plan, which made $146 million, with the budget only being $22 million. Rock Jeez. brought a ton to these roles, and they showed his versatility. It showed how he could play roles that were a little bit more emotional and branch off from just being an action star. It was here where Rock started to find his niche in the heartwarming family film. Area. Yep. Who are you? I'm the Tooth Fairy. Ah, uh, the Tooth Fairy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Movies like Tooth Fairy, Race to Witch Mountain. He made guest appearances in Disney Channel shows like Wizards of Waverly Place, which is the Go Disney Show. Go ahead and fight me. Had him on <laughs> Not the, the Go Disney Show. Host the O9 Kids Choice Awards. More and more people who hadn't heard of The Rock started to know the name, and this is where things really took off. He was furthering his name in a mainstream scope which was without wrestling. Here's another thing, a lot of people within the movie industry tried to dumb down The Rock. They wanted himself to start calling him Dwayne Johnson instead of The Rock, lose weight and basically cut off connections to the WWE. Mm. It wasn't a good look for him, but Rock didn't do that. He said himself that instead of catering to Hollywood, he made what Hollywood the hell? cater to him. In this time frame, what you can kind of see hell? because on movie posters, it shows him as just Dwayne Johnson and no reference of The Rock. But up until this point, he'd done something that no other WWE superstar had done. He'd made a name for himself in the wider entertainment scope. Mm -hmm. Hulk Hogan, failed. Roddy Piper, unsustained. Mm -hmm. Andre the Giant, unsustained. John Cena, he hadn't fully crossed over just yet. Stone Cold, he was trying to. It's safe to say he also failed, even though many would argue that Stone Cold was the guy in the Attitude Era. When it came to taking that next step, Stone Cold just didn't gel with entertainment like The Rock did. Mm -hmm. But why? Why didn't Stone Cold <laughs> make it as hell? big as The Rock? <laughs> Those two were seen as the one and two or two and one, whichever way you want to look at it. The question is, why didn't Stone Cold get to the same status as The Rock? Both men had their own unique look and style, but in retrospect, if we're able to look at them in terms of versatility, The Rock has Stone Cold beat when it comes to being a more versatile performer. Mm. Stone Cold, for the most part, kept things pretty simple. He's a rough, out-of-control Texan, likes to drink beer, raise some hell and leave. As for The Rock, there were so many different evolutions of I can see that. That's... Corporate Rock, Babyface Rock, Hollywood yep. Rock. Mixed with that was his natural charm, which meshed well with the entertainment side of things. Ultimately, it was The Rock's ability to... That is a very good point. Stone Cold, you know what you're going to get with him. He's kind of one note, and that's not a bad thing. Stone Cold is Stone Cold. I'm okay with him being the guy. I'm just here. I'm from Texas. I'm going to whoop your ass and drink some beer and call it a day. And I can I can see him. It, it, I can't see Stone Cold being given a, uh, in a, like a drama film, like something serious or a rom-com. I can't see that. The Rock, I can because he has different ranges. Because he he wasn't just always The Rock. He had different personas of The Rock with the corporation, Hollywood Rock, him being a face. Like, it, there was different variations. Stone Cold was Stone Cold. Like, just there to whoop ass, take names, and drink beer. And there's nothing wrong with that. But when you're trying to be in the film industry, that crossover, you got to be able to have a, a good crossover and and be able to mix well and switch it up. You know, make jokes, garner criticism, adapt the character, and have a larger-than-life personality oh, in and outside of WWE that helped him become more successful than Stone Cold. Like, Austin tried too, but he was just in a couple of low-budget films and didn't really pop off like The Rock. In terms of charisma, it was The Rock. 
Stone Cold was for sure the more relatable guy, but when push came to shove in terms of a commanding presence and overall crossover appeal, I talked about it at the beginning, it was always The Rock. Mm -hmm. Back to his timeline of success, it was 2011 and The Rock was everywhere. It was from here where he got even more jacked and he found his signature look. Started to gain a bigger social media presence as it was growing. Yo. But the time was now. It was he was starting to, to get swole. To WWE. He was announced as a special guest host for WrestleMania 27. Here he interfered in the WWE title main event between Miz and John Cena. That has to be one of the worst main events ever. Yeah. This setting up a match for next year's WrestleMania 28. It was labeled once in a lifetime. The clash of generational megastars. Definitely wasn't once in a lifetime as WWE started seeing all that money that it was generating. Just like Hogan and Rock in 2002, it was going to be Icon versus Icon. The Rock versus John Cena. Mm -hmm. April 1st, 2012. The first time WWE set up a match a year in advance. Cena, for those unfamiliar, was the dude who took the mantle from The Rock and carried WWE into a family-friendly time frame known as the PG era. Mm -hmm. He became the poster child of the WWE scratch mark era. He was the man who, when tragedy struck the company in the form of a double murder-suicide and families were saying no to the WWE, brought back good faith through his charitable work and connection with the young audience. Yep, that's, ju that's John WWE Cena. WWE are usually fabricated, for the most part. But these two had legit beef, and it stemmed from Cena not being a fan of The Rock's dedication to the place that made him famous in the first place. Cena, in a 2008 interview, said, "This is this is my take on The Rock, and he's he's a genuinely nice guy. I, I, I've met him; he's a, he's a fantastic human being. What I kind of get peeved about is, and this I, I guess I guess this is like this is my flaw. This is my Achilles heel because I hear it every day with with young talent, with mid card talent." With, with people aspiring to make it in this business, I hear I've wanted to do this my whole life. Rock is falls into that category. He, at one point, loved wrestling and wanted to do this all of his life. Then explain to me why he can't come back for a 15th anniversary show or why he can't make an appearance at WrestleMania. Simply put, it's because he wants to be an actor and that there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. He's a very good actor. He's very successful. He's done very well for himself. And associating with sports entertainment doesn't do much for his acting career. It only helps out the sports yeah. entertainment audience. So I get why he doesn't come back. I just, um, don't fuck me around and tell me that you love this when you're just doing this to do something else. Those are some. And that's what made that feud actually quite entertaining because that, that was, it was one of those things where it was like, you know, that's how, that's how John felt. So them going back and forth, that wasn't no, no BS. That's what made that feud entertaining. But it's kind of funny because now John Cena is doing the exact same thing. Granted, yeah, we know John loves the WWE, but John's not around. Because he's doing uh, the whole movie thing with HBO and... And Warner Brothers as the Peacemaker and all this other stuff, which he's actually very, very, very good. Easily John Cena's best acting role. He showed a lot of depth in as Peacemaker. If you haven't seen it on HBO Max, go check it out right now. It's that good. He is fantastic. But that's neither here nor there. I'm just just seeing how things play out. <laughs> Some extremely strong words from Cena. The Rock at the 2008 Hall of Fame when he was inducting his dad and grandpa said that he wanted to face John Cena. Rock wanted his return to be worthwhile. He didn't just want to get back into wrestling for no reason. And he also didn't want to be wrestling so he would succeed in entertainment. That's why he took another Cena burying The Rock's movies, saying that his best stuff was pre-recorded or via satellite. Even making <laughs> fun of him for writing promos on his wrist. Mm -hmm. To which The Rock was genuinely furious. Yeah. The Rock was making fun of Cena with his history lesson. Nah, he was actually, I think uh, that whole, when John called out the writing uh, your promos on his wrist, I think <laughs> The Rock was actually mad. I, I don't think that was like no kayfabe situation. He was legit like pissed off about that shit. So they started really going back and forth like in an entertaining way. And I'm all for it. It makes for compelling television. Since the rock concert and making fun of the way he dressed, they were giving audiences entertaining TV while also generating mainstream coverage. 
So the match came in 2012, broke all types of records, generated so much buzz that it went on to have the highest WWE buy rate ever mm -hmm. at 1.217 million buys, the highest grossing WrestleMania of all time. The winner of that match was, was The, the Rock. Rock. This was because WWE wanted to do a rematch the following year to squeeze out some more profits you out of knew, these two. You knew. This time, it was going to be for the WWE title, which Rock won by ending CM Punk's 434-day reign. The second go around, it was Cena who took the win. The first time around is still producing better numbers. Yeah. Why did I bring this up? Well, this really showed Rock's star power. People outside of WWE were watching this match. Why? Because The Rock was there. Everybody knew who The Rock was. And in the growing age of social media, these two matches were huge. Otherwise, it would have just been like, oh, Rock's back. Cool. It's mm -hmm. predetermined. I, I don't really want to watch. The Rock's really not that big of a deal. But here, he was an extremely big deal. After this, these two squashed their beef, and Rock has even said that Cena is one of his best friends. Funny enough, today, Cena is doing exactly what he criticized yep, Rock that's, for. Yep, I just and said that. leaving the WWE and acting. Meanwhile, in the theaters, you couldn't go anywhere without seeing The Rock plastered throughout them. This was the point where he really kicked it into the next gear. Mm -hmm. Movies like G.I. Joe Retaliation, Pain and Gain, and probably what gave him the biggest breakout, Agent Hobbs in Fast yep. Five back in 2011. Once they brought The Rock into Fast and the Fast and Furious series, it took off. It took off. I mean, and not to say that was the only reason, but that was a good that was a good thing that they did bring him in because people liked him. You know, people he was a likable character. People wanted to see more of him. People were going to see the movie just to see him. So. They did a spinoff movie with him and Jason Statham. I should let you know what type of pool he has, what type of star power he was bringing to that franchise that was kind of dying out. When The Rock entered the Fast and Furious franchise, he was given high praise and many said that he brought new life into the franchise. He did. When Fast Five returned, it became the highest grossing of the series so far at $630 million. Oof. Even though, you know, he beefed it with Vin Diesel later on. Not just mm -hmm. making big hits, but he also laid out the foundation of how WWE stars could move over into entertainment. Someone I like Batista, like Batista. started off small and then branched off into bigger productions. That was all thanks to The Rock. Yep. From here, it was seemingly all hits, no misses for The Rock. Furious 7, a top 10 all-time grossing movie. Yep. San Andreas, Hercules did The Rock a ton of favorites in terms of the overall look. He was a main character on Ballers, which I really enjoyed. That show was very reminiscent of the Entourage. Yeah, I enjoyed Ballers as well. If you haven't seen our Ballers, it definitely gives the HBO Entourage vibe. You've seen that too. It's a good show. Uh, the later seasons kind of fall, fell off, but I like Ballers. That was that was a very good show as well. Moana came out, and that movie was nominated and won a ton of awards in animation. Rock's character was a tribute to his grandfather and his Polynesian heritage. And the last couple of years, The Rock hasn't slowed down one Nope. Bit. He's gone to every single jungle you could possibly imagine. <laughs> and Shaw was a success. And The Rock really found his groove, globalizing himself even more, becoming one of the most followed people in the world on social media. He was named to Time's Most Influential 100 in 2016 and 2019. 2016 Sexiest Man Alive. 2018 and 2020 Forbes Celebrity 100. And in 2017... Rock got his star on the walk of That's fame. That's awesome, A whole man. host of awards followed in the upcoming years, hit after hit, and becoming the world's highest paid actor. Yep. In 2019, he won the MTV Generation Award as a beloved actor whose contributions have turned them into a household name. And that's the point here. The Rock is a household name. Yep. The biggest one to come out of wrestling. Yep. To transcend by its definition means to go beyond the range of limits. And The Rock has transcended wrestling. Many he is a transcended transcended wrestler bro he transcended just what wrestling was in wwe he is legitimately a household name everybody knows who he is outside of his profession simple as that simple as that bro it, there's not that many people that are transcending their sport or whatever they do let alone wrestling in 2022 is bro that is that's one of those things and he's paved the way for a lot of the other wrestlers to get into acting and be successful because they see the talent that these wrestlers possess in just their acting ability so this is hey man 
Like I said, The Rock's goaded. There's not much else to say. Any people wouldn't even connect him back to wrestling because the name is that big. Point is, this is no longer about wrestling anymore. His name was and is up in the bright lights with people who you could go anywhere and everyone will know who they are. The Rock is a megastar so big that they created a sitcom to showcase his childhood and rise mm-hmm. to prominence with Young Rock. The amount of views and coverage that's gotten is completely insane. You have to think that a couple people out of that show have gotten back into wrestling. You look back at how Hulk Hogan became wrestling's first global megastar. The Rock was able to do that alongside Stone Cold Steve Austin and then become the first of his kind to venture off into different facets of business, entertainment, successfully and actually succeed. His greatest strength is his <laughs> on screen presence. Him hugging a rock. The Rock hugging a rock. That's funny, bro. An infectious personality. It comes across in interviews. You see it with co-stars. You see it with a dude like Kevin Hart. It's on the big screen, full and wide. The only knock on The Rock has been that he's playing himself in a lot of these movies. Yeah. Kind of similar to guys like John Wayne and Errol Flynn, who you just remember who they are when they appear on your screen. Rock takes what's usually a very similar character for the most part and just adapts it for various different roles. It's in the same breath as a guy like Arnold. Rock is yeah. now a Hollywood icon, one yeah. of the industry's most charming and polarizing stars. The most electrifying man mm-hmm. in the world, basically. A very interesting case study of a football player turned pro wrestler and later global phenomenon. It's crazy. You look at pictures of The Rock from when he was younger, and they all string together like they were being shot to be put in a documentary. The guy was a born entertainer. Mm-hmm. Wrestling fans like to throw out the word megastar a lot. But under a critical eye, there have only been four true megastars. Hulk Hogan, who globalized the WWF yep. and helped the company expand its reach into more homes. John Cena, who led WWE into the PG era and brought WWE further into entertainment. Can, okay. Stone Cold, who became a global... I just had to make sure he had Stone Cold in there. If he didn't have Stone Cold in there... Also, hey, Megastar with his recognized the rock. looks, antics, and according to the owner, WWE's biggest peer draw, and of course, The, the rock. rock. Yep. But The Rock was the only person who was able to take the notoriety of the name, mix it into pop culture, and then move over into the entertainment business. And after years and years, he's become one of the world's biggest stars. We've seen so many people from the wrestling bubble attempt to be actors but no one to the critical acclaim of The Rock. With mm-hmm. that, he's an entrepreneur. He's got his production company, Seven Bucks Production. The name stems from Rock only having $7 in his pocket when he was released from the yep. CFL. He's got his tequila brand, and the dude is just unmatched. His, uh, I think it's called Terramana. If you drink tequila, it's actually pretty good. It's very smooth. Love me some Terramana, and it's not that pricey. You know, you know, People now be on the Casamigos and stuff, and to me, I feel like Casamigos is overpriced only because it's the it's the wave now. Terramana, very good if you're old enough to drink. Obviously, go check it out. You know, it, it's some, it's some good liquor, man. Good tequila. In everything he does, the on-screen presence is insane. We'll probably never see someone of the Rock's magnitude again. The type of connection that the Rock has with wrestling fans. Let's be honest, it's one out of one. Yep. There's no sniffing him. People use the term palm of their hand a lot. And if you YouTube one of Rock's clips, you'll see how The Rock was able to make audiences wait for his every word and then make them die of absolute laughter. Mm-hmm. There's no major mainstream celebrity that started with sports entertainment, entered the mainstream scope, and done what he's done. And at the very first millisecond of his theme song's riff can get audiences excited to yep. see him. No major mainstream celebrity has ever shone as bright of a light on sports entertainment as The Rock has. You look at ambassadors to their brand, Federer in tennis, LeBron to basketball, Mm -hmm. McGregor with the UFC, The Rock is that for the WWE. Even though he's not an active member, the only other guy that comes close to him is John Cena. Also, another thing with The Rock as it links back to wrestling, he didn't wear out his welcome. And the second was he was selfless. He gave people like Jericho, Angle, Foley, and Lesnar their first world title wins. He accomplished so much in such little time, and his family's legacy continues to grow in the business. Facts. The Rock has become an inspiration through hard work, determination, and he's one of the world's most respected people in both the wrestling and entertainment business. A perfect mix of magnetic charisma, unmatched charm, and an unrivaled presence. The Rock truly became a one out of one, the only one to do it like he has, and a cultural icon that will live on forever. Hey, man. The Rock is goaded. I'm going to keep saying that. Uh, this was a dope video by Super Kick Studios. Once again, 
make sure you go ahead definitely give him a subscribe and let me know in the comments down below if you have already subscribed to him or have been subscribed to him man but yeah this was dope and hopefully roman reigns can follow in the footsteps because right now roman reigns is that guy he's he's the guy that wwe is going with he's he's their biggest star i don't know if he's gonna cross it over into movies i know he's been talking about it maybe that could possibly happen you know what i'm saying i know he he was uh in the movie with the rock uh the little fast and furious spinoff with uh jason Statham. i believe he was in that movie correct me if i'm wrong I believe he was in that movie with the rock so who knows we'll see if he will be the next the next person to trans like like i guess you could say crossover into film solo and it actually works you know we'll see if that happens but yeah this video just was cool to see very informative and it just it just makes me appreciate the rock for all he's done in wwe and outside of wwe but comment down below let me know what was your favorite rock moment of all time like let me know down below i want to want to go down memory lane with you guys but i appreciate all love and support road to 80k appreciate y'all keeping me see y'all next one peace